You need to lower your chair too. Yeah, I know. We don't want you way up higher. Oh, that's as low as I can go. <coughs> hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Anna. This is Geeked Up Game Review Group. We're going to bring you guys a game from Steve Jackson Games, but also from Fireside Games. And if you can guess what it is, in five, four, three, two, one. Too late, one. Munchkin Penny! <laughs> Uh, so uh, we got that in the mail, as well as this uh, instant certification. Uh, it just represents one dollar in a game, I guess. It says once per game, we'll play instant gratification to immediately add or earn treasure to your hand. Uh, and then we have a Master Munchkin uh, pin. Uh, so uh, whoever gets Master Munchkin <laughs> at the end of the game gets to wear the pin. Fireside is known for having little extras for their games for promos and they're kind of cool like coasters for yes so for panic so we're really excited about this game because they have taken castle panic from fireside games and munchkin from steve jackson games and have smashed them together and created this box of mayhem is what i'm gonna guess is, is. um as you can see we haven't taken the plastic off of it yet so we are really eager to get this open, and we appreciate Fireside sending a copy of it out to us. And uh, we also appreciate Steve Jackson uh, sending us stuff as well. So, um, you know, anything we can do for those guys, uh, we're, we're glad to do it. So, so the box, it says, defend together and backstab. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I, I, guess there's a, I guess there's a way to play this. Uh, it's like Castle Panic, but you can also hurt each other. Uh, in the munchkin aspect. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to work out. So let's go ahead and go to the box, get this plastic off, and show you guys the components inside. Let's do that. I'm excited. Alright All right, guys, we're about to open up this box of mayhem. And I'm afraid there's going to be lots of stuff flying out. So if we don't make it, I'm just kidding. We're excited. Uh, this has been sitting. Tim started a new thing where we do one review at a time. And we always look at the box and judge it by the box. First, to get first impressions. And read about it, of course. You want to open it up today? Yeah. I pre it. <laughs> mm. I love it already. <clears throat> it's really hot in this house. Guys, we watch Sons of Anarchy, and Tim thinks he's Chibs. He I'm not even trying to be Chibs. He I'm randomly just being talks Irish. with like an Irish accent, but he's Scottish. But oh no, it's Castle Panic, Wizard's Tower. Yeah, we have that expansion. So here's, here's the lid. You oh. see Munchkin and the dragon, and that's empty. And you see that? Edges and stuff. I'm okay. Sorry, but so they've got Castle Panic. You see that? There you go. Dead panic. Get it a little centered. I'm trying. You're like way up the there. Glare. You're way up there. Here's the wizard's tower. <laughs> and then they put Munchkin. So, here's the rule book. I'm guessing that Fireside did the print run of this? Yeah, I think it's fine. So, is it, we got to read the rule book. Because, yeah, it's Castle Panic, but. But it's like they're showing mostly fireside stuff. <laughs> I think fireside printed it then. Oh, I think that was out of the shot. I'm sorry, guys. It's an advertisement here. She's bad about that. I really am. I don't pay attention. I just think you guys are here in my living room, or kitchen with me. <laughs> well, they are, sort of. Virtually. Here's the board. It looks. Speaking of virtually, how many people are going to BlizzCon virtually? Not me. <laughs> I don't even understand that. How you attend a convention? I don't know. And you, you pay forty bucks. People walk around with the camera, I guess. Yep. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let's fast forward. We should do that at Gen Con. Charge people forty dollars to watch our videos of us walking around <laughs> with the camera. Yeah. There's a Kickstarter for that. That's hey, cool. look, we got a Munchkin Panic bag. Is there really? What? A Kickstarter? There was. Yeah, for someone to walk around. Yeah, I didn't make it. Uh, and then there's what are those stands for? Are they for the? The castles, I guess? Oh, I think you have characters. No, I think they're for the castles. Oh, they're for the castles. Okay, I was just trying to remember what the stands. Ooh, what's this, do? 
Yeah, it looks like goo. Goo. Look at that dice. That's a pretty dice. Dye, I mean. Purple. Pink? Pink, purple. Purpley pink? In pink the light, purple. In the light is pink, but in the dark is purple. Ooh. Mm, a chameleon dice. Now this says, more Dye. Munchkin <laughs> mini expansion. <laughs> Need more backstabbing in your Munchkin panic? Just add these cards to stir. Yeah, they actually put a... Well, expansion in it. Yeah, there's an expansion in every copy, I do believe. Look at that. Ooh, these <coughs> cards feel amazing. They're like... Are they? Yeah. I bet sneaky. these probably feel the same. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Yeah. The dwarf. Oh, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> elf, cleric, wizard, Oh, these do thief. feel nice. They're nice and glossy. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so here's those. those oh, seem like, we're adding them? Those seem like the basic, normal. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Are those character cards? These are six characters. Yeah. Do they have Dwarf, characters? Elf, Halfling, Thief, Warrior, and Wizard. Dwarf, Halfling, Elf, Cleric, Wizard, Thief, Warrior is what I have. Okay. Uh, there's the characters. Oh, that's a, okay. There's a double sided. <laughs> so we actually play characters? I think so. Okay, so we have a magic missile, shield of ubiqu... You, I can't even pronounce that. Ubiquity? Ubiquity? Ub, I don't know. Pull arms, buckler of swashing. Instead of swashbuckler, buckler of swashing. Rat on a stick. Singing and dancing sword. Well, he looks cheerful. He's ready to go slay some beasts. See him? Mmm. So that must yeah. be... Oh, these are the treasure cards. Ha ha! Maybe. Here, you want to put these with them? And then we have the tokens. Large there. angry chicken. Unspeakable, awful, indescribable horror. <laughs> Platycore. Platycore, like a platypus. This, stuff was, this feels like a very Halloween, October... Flying frogs. Look, it's the White Brothers. I think it's because they're skeletons. And then of course we have the castle. But this castle is very cartoony. And it's kind of cool to have a 3D animation cartoony style pieces. Instead of the old regular castle. Box is set up just like Castle Panic, so that's cool. Our fortifications and stuff. This is very cool. I'm so excited about this. Here, can I see this bug? I don't know what this goo is, though. The Uzi. I think that's going to have some kind of special... I like how it came with the bag on the first edition, because Castle Panic didn't. We had to get the Wizard's Tower to get the bag, or buy it from Fireside. Yeah. So that's kind of nice that they gave us the bag in this box, and that's that's probably something they just didn't think of, you know, something to put the pieces <laughs> in. Because you used to just shuffle them on the board, and then you would flip them over. And... 3,872 ogres. What's this difficulty? One. And if that's what it appears to be. Uh-oh. You got one hit point? Goo didn't make it in. Oh, whoopsies. All right, so now we will go ahead and show you guys how to play Munchkin Panic. Hey guys, we're gonna play this game. I can't remember the name, Munchkin Panic. Go ahead, just do the intro. So well, you're a teacher in this game. I'll teach you, you do the, all right. Giggity go. Shh. Here we have the game all set it up with uh, the board, uh, obviously, we would need that to set it up. And then we have our three randoms already picked and we rolled to figure out where the spaces were going to be. We have our castle and our walls, or you our gotta, tower and our walls. You got to make sure that you actually do pull monsters if you get a curse or any other things in there, you put them back in the bag. Yeah. So, and usually me and Anna would play with these cards face up and in front of us on a regular Castle Panic because it's completely co-op. But with the Munchkin twist in this one, making it Munchkin Panic, we actually have cards in here that are going to help or hurt our 
our co-op player. So it's kind of co-op, but then it's not. Um, because you're both trying to keep the tower protected, but you're also trying to backstab each other. Uh, and char character, I don't even know where I was going to go with this. The characters we chose, Anna has the dwarf, and then I have the cleric. So she gets an extra card at the beginning of the game. And what else do you um, get? I get one card to my hand size, including my starting hand. So always I get seven cards, and then... It says I must use three hit cards to say 3,872 orcs. So if that monster comes onto the board and I try to slay him, I'll need three castle cards to get him. And then my cleric says that when I draw up, I may draw three from the bottom of the castle discard pile, keep one or none, and return the rest to the top of the discard pile, continue drawing up afterwards. It doesn't say afterwards, but... That's basically what it's saying. It says continue drawing up. And then it says, can discard wannabe vampire by saying booga booga and take this and take his treasure. So if that creature wannabe vampire pops up and I say booga booga, then I could just send <laughs> him away and claim him and his treasure. Hmm. So that's what I was looking for him the first time I played this. So, so I was like, yours oh, this is, cool. is two benefits, and I have one benefit and a candy cap. Unless if uh, no, the orcs is one. I'm sure. Orcs is one. Like yeah, that. one hit, like that. Um, yeah. Well, that's why I was saying you would divide the three thousand eight hundred and seventy-two by three, and you would actually only need one hit card for each orc. And something that's new is treasure cards. Because I don't see why a dwarf would be weak against an orc. But anyways. Yeah, and then we have the treasure cards, which is a new add-on to the game. Um, and those you get when you slay a monster, and they have little pips down here, one or two. I've only seen one or two. I don't think I've seen three. But with the pips, um, that's how many treasure you get when you slay. The little um, gold dot below, or beside the numbers. And... I think we are ready to start. Well, we have these, our reference sheets. I have one. Oh, I don't. Uh, I have one now. And I don't really need that right now. I. Yeah, not really. So, so we start by discarding any cards. And, um. Oh, this starts in the full archer. They all start in the archer ring here. But that's just the first game. But any other one, they'll start in the forest ring. Well, not first game, first, first initial round. setup. <laughs> um, and then you look at your cards, and you can discard any. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to discard and draw up, and I'll give charity if I had any more than four um, treasure cards in my hand, I would have to give away treasure cards to someone else. Yeah, the overrunning remains. And then I can play <coughs> cards and negotiate or negotiate. I think you negotiate. I don't yeah. You can negotiate with someone else to say, Do you have anything to help me? Like, if you give me this and we slay this monster, then I'll give you the treasure and I'll keep the monster. Because you keep the monsters to get points in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a blue swordsman, and what? that, uh, wait, that's Why not what I wanted, no, I wanted my hero, <laughs> a blue hero, and that's going to take the gazebo down to two. And because she uses the blue hero, that means she can attack in any ring, not just the one that it, because right. it's a hero, it can go to swordsman, knight, or archer. And then I have a red archer and an any color archer, so I'm going to take this small rat, that's one. And that's one and treasure for two. me. No? What are you doing? You don't destroy it twice? No, I'm doing red. Oh, red. Okay. So, he's the two, and I take one treasure card for getting the mole rat. And then I'm going to hit with... I hit him with any color. I hit him with the red to go down. And... I thought you were going to hit the gazebo. I, Tim, do you have anything to help me while I'm in the archer ring? Blue and red? Uh, blue, yes. Uh, red, no. Not until, I have enough knights to make a round table. Do you have a blue archer? Yeah, blue archer. Well, how about you help me with that, and 
it will just be down to one, so you can help slay him next round and get the. Well, yeah, because if I use Blue Archer for you now, then I will take everything when he gets into the Night Ring. Okay. So here, there's your one Blue Archer. Okay, so he, so he goes one. down to one. And this is our discard pile right here. And everyone moves up. Oh, wait, we each start with a treasure, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I forgot. So I got my treasure, and then I add my treasure to hand, and I got my trophies, which is the, the um, guys right here. And now we move monsters. Each monster moves up, and then we place monsters. Oh, there you go. So we draw From the handy dandy munchkin panic bag. And this one goes in number six ring. King Tut. I feel this like this one the, will go in five. I feel like the munchkin logo on the die should have been oh, six. Oh, curse. Not All one. monsters move clockwise. All? All monsters. And. King Tut. Last one. His will, name rhymes with butt. <laughs> this goes to number one, Harpies. So, these go set to the side, and now it will be Tim's turn. Alright. Well, my gazebo thing, that didn't work out. Yes, it did, because I have a red knight as well. Ha -ha. So we use a red knight on the gazebo. That will kill him. He will be my marker. That gives me one treasure card. Gives me sandals of protection. Mm, that's cool. It says, what great shoes. Play to cancel any curse card. Alright, so that took care of that. Um, those guys aren't available yet. Green. Let's see. We have a green hero, which I could do one damage to the lawyers. Right? Mm-hmm. And then... I have an any color knight. And I can do another point of damage and then that would give him that would make him die, yes. Yes. Well I can negotiate and give you a knight if you give me him and I keep the treasure. I mean I keep him and you keep the treasure. Okay, so I'll take my any color knight back. That's gonna put him to one because of my hero. Where are we putting discard cards? I'd keep your hero. And use my any color knight? Do you, do you have a green hero or any color hero? It's just green. Oh, okay. Right. And my red knight. Red knight I used on the other guy. Okay. Where's the discard? Are we discarding here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So green knight. He goes discarded. So you get him and I get the treasure. Ooh, boots of butt kicking. Damage a monster for two additional points. Maybe played with a hit card. Must be played with a hit card. I was like, maybe. <clears throat> Must be. Two, three, four, five, six. That's already, I'm already max hand. Okay. So, all the key chairs will move up, Rex. Mm -hmm. And then, is it three? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's roll for the first one. Four. Large angry chicken. Mm -hmm. Alright. And six. Oopsies. Oh, there they are. 3,872 orcs. Holy cow. And they're <laughs> one point. <laughs> they're taken down pretty easily, except for me. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that. Oh, so I would only need one, and you would need three. That's funny, that they made one monster in here depicted to one. Uh-oh, curse. Monsters in green move one space. And since he was already there before I pulled that, that's it, right? Three? All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now we're going to use this as whose turn it is. Your turn. Okay. So I discard and draw. I'm not going to discard, but I'm going to draw my seven since that's my... And... Okay. So we've got... Are 
guess I should pay attention to what I have. So I can say yeah or nay. So I am going to play my green archer. And that is going to hit any monster in the green archer ring for one point. And I'm going to add my point, pointy hat of power. So that damages a monster for one additional point, And it must be played with a hit card. So that's going to take the large angry chicken. And he's mine. And I get my treasure. And... Then... <coughs> If he keeps going like this, then we should be able to win. <laughs> Nobody's even gotten to a wall. The first time we played, the castle wall already got blasted away. In and like, within like three turns. I actually have <laughs> this really cool thing here. I'm going to play Flask of Glue. I play at any time to place a glue token on one monster. That monster does not move for the rest of the turn. So, I'm going to place the glue on King Tut. Oh, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It's a glue. It acts like the is okay, it oil. So before we go any further, the reason that you want to negotiate for these tokens is actually that's actually part of the game of how who wins at the end. Mm -hmm. Where in the original Castle Panic, you got to choose if you wanted to win or not. Where this Munchkin Panic, it actually has that as there is a winner at the end of the game. It's <laughs> not everyone wins. You don't have to negotiate for that. I'll actually read you the rules because it's kind of funny how they wrote it. Um, it says, okay, the negotiation is up to the players. For example, if the help, if the help results in slaying a monster, you may take the trophy while the other player takes the treasure, or you take the trophy and treasure and buy your help or a soda. The options are limited by the imagination of the players. So, it's not limited to in-game actions. You can negotiate outside, which makes it kind of fun. Um, so these are what I've used. Yeah, like I can help her all game and say, I'll help you do the laundry if you help me take this monster. And another thing that's cool is I also have Fortify Wall. So I see here that there's kind of an abundance coming here. So I'm going to Fortify. But he's sticky. Yeah, well. I so wanna... Fortify a Wall over here that we don't know what's coming. No. <laughs> Where are our walls? Are oh, they no. in the bag over there? No, I put them in here. Why would you do that? I don't know. I was just packing stuff and threw it all in the monsters. Wow. What? That wasn't a smart choice. I know, because now I had to dump all these out, I think. Don't do that. Why? I can search. Okay. So, um, while she's searching for her fortification, should I... Is it me now? Or, here it or is. do you have more actions you're going to take? So this piece right here goes on the wall, so if they hit the wall, they hit that fortified section and the wall isn't damaged. So. There we go, it gets a light on there. So that played on, on my turn. And now I added the treasure to my hand already and I get to move monsters. So he doesn't move. And these two move and then I draw three. 4,000 orcs. Five. We should make a rule, like if this hits a wall, oh, it also takes a out a tower or something, because there's 3,000 of them. Shrieking Geek. <laughs> oh no, ah! Did you roll for him? For him, yeah. Oh. Floating Nose. That's scary. Oh, nope, that wasn't a very good roll. Two. Wannabe Vampire. <sighs> booga booga. <laughs> is it my turn? Now it Not is yet. Tim's turn. Okay, booga booga. Yay, I win. Uh, that goes in my pile. Treasure card for free. Woohoo! Oh, wow. <clears throat> I have a bloody chainsaw of dismemberment. Chainsaw of bloody dismemberment. I said that wrong. Oh, it's trying to be cool. I look like a fool. Damage a monster for three additional points must be played with a hit card. I think, I think everything has to be played with a hit card. What do we want to do? Did you uh, discard and draw? No, I took out the dealio and... You need six cards in your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, no, seven. No, castle cards. Oh, 
The treasure cards don't count as that? Nope, you have a hand limit of four in those. And if you go above four, that's when you have to give charity. That's right. Okay. So that's... Which give charity simply means that you discard down to four and you give um, Did you the extra cards to the person with the least points. These aren't swords men. These are swords women. They made them female. Do you have men? No. Oh. What do I do? I don't have any arches. Okay, I'm gonna play this. This is like a sort of a backstabbing card, but it's not really hurting anyone. Uh, it says, "Help me out here." So I compel an opponent to show you his her hand. I get to choose one card. Which it doesn't, I don't think that includes your treasure cards, just your your castle cards, right? Or is it your whole hand? Mm -hmm. It says, if no cards can help slay the monster, do not choose a card. Okay, so well, I, I need... I can show you, but I... I don't think... Oh, I can't use... I can't take your treasure because I can't have the card to bonus me anyway. I can't see your... Well, I'm trying to hand it to you. Oh. Well, you don't have any archers, so never mind. Okay. I was going to take the orc before you could... There's a knight, but I don't... Do you have a knight? Uh, I do think I have a, any color. I do. Look, Anna just helped me and she didn't even need to. Ha! Huh. Okay, so there's my any color knight. But, baby monster enhancer. Add one point of health to a monster under attack. Draw one treasure card. Play during a player's play card phase. So now he's worth three? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll use the boots of butt kicking that adds additional two points. So now I kill the harpies, yes? They have three points, so. Oh, so they're three, so that's one, two, three, so they're down to one, yeah? What, you hit it for three? Yeah, one, two, three. Okay, then it's, you take him. Oh, I take him? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was confused. I thought maybe this turned into a three, so, so I needed a three to you do You can, it. That, that was a backstabbing card. <laughs> didn't work. Haha. -ha. I tried. I get a rat on a stick. Play to damage a monster for one additional point. <clears throat> um, so that's that's the end of my card stuff. We're actually doing pretty well here. <laughs> yeah. How long does he stay stuck? He comes off at when I come back. Okay, so the glue will come off of him. Shrieking geek. Ah! <laughs> <coughs> the bag. You tied it. Two! Plutonium Dragon. I'm gonna kill him. He's worth three treasure cards. Yeah, and he's five. What happens with this is see how the lowest number on here is a three? That means you have to use three hit cards to slay him. What's the five? Why is it five four? Huh? So it's five. No, oh, you and then he goes one, down to four. Then one, he goes down to three, and then you need three, three cards. Makes sense. You know, I explained that to him the other night like five times. Yeah. I wonder if this is a joke to the Pikachu. What is it? This is Pukachu. <laughs> Puke at you. <laughs> Pikachu. Okay, and I roll a six, so that's gonna go here behind the orcs, behind the army of orcs. That's two. Was that two? That's yeah. two. And then we have an undead horse. And these gnats, those are gross. Undead horse. And I'm sorry we're moving so slow, guys, but I think it, I actually think it'll be better for those that haven't played Castle Panic. I'll be able to learn this one. So it's basically the same, you just have some backstabbing cards, and you have cards that you can play as a dwarf or a cleric or a warrior or a... And there's different versions of this game, like there's different <coughs> game modes you can play, and we play like the maxed out. Okay, so we have Halfling, an Elf, a Wizard, a Thief, a Warrior, Cleric, Dwarf. And these also have the expansion 
uh, cards in it. But what's cool is that it comes with the expansion. It also comes with this. No, they didn't, they sent us that. Oh, I thought it came with it. No, they sent us that. Oh, well, we have an instant gratification. And uh, this is once per game. Play instant gratification to immediately add earned treasure to your hand. What does that mean? It's because isn't the treasure automatic? Do they go to our hand, or does it go into a pool? I think that that means that if, like, say I was getting treasure, you could play that and take oh, it. Ah, I see. I could play it against you to right. take it. So we would really need two of these, or yeah. we could roll for it. <laughs> the instant gratification. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that would make it your turn. Okay, then I'm gonna remove this goo. Glue. Glue. Goo. It's glue, but oh. it looks I'm like gonna draw up. Oh my! <clears throat> I got a couple cards I need to read here real quick. So. so in about thirty minutes, we will continue the yeah. gameplay. <laughs> you can read. Oh, here you get the token. Okay. We keep passing it back and forth. It's okay. not really a token to say who's going, but... So... Well, I just don't have anything. Awesome. That means I well, get to slay all no. the monsters. You don't have... I'm gonna do this. It says damage <clears throat> a monster anywhere on the board except the forest for two points. Maybe played without a hit card. So I'm gonna get the floating nose. That gives me a treasure. You know what I'm going to do? And you guys aren't going to know this, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a detail on the bottom of this video. And it's going to say, watch us slay 3,872 mm -hmm. orcs. <laughs> like, what? There's not even that many monster tokens. That'll get us some viewers. Okay. Now, now like, this says... I'm going to play a sleep potion, and that says no monsters move for the rest of this turn. Maybe played without a hit card. Awesome. So. Oh, so there is some cards you can play with no hits. Nice. This is. Oh, and it's got the logo. Show them the logos at the top. This castle and the forest. So that castle and that forest logo, Rottler, the very top, right underneath of the name of the card, that is to show that um, it's capable of saying that means that the, the ones in the castle ring, if there were any, and the ones in the forest ring also will not move. And obviously the monsters that are in all the other rings. And I'm going to draw my monsters. Oh, sorry. I'm hogging them. Oh, that goes on ring one. I thought that should have been a six. I thought so too, but can you... Five... Because you'd be like, I'm ultimate munchkin, I just roll the Curse. Six. No, sir. Lose help one. on your next turn. <laughs> Bigfoot. On six. Is this six? Okay. And... Oh, I used that card earlier. I don't get that. Now it is Tim's turn. I can help you with that curse. Because it's not your turn, it's my turn, right? Mm -hmm. So I can help you on my turn? Is that is that legal? Mm. I could do something just out of... Like generosity. Being, uh, generosity. But I'm going to negotiate that. I'll take that curse away. And give you help if you need it. As long as I get every monster slayed my turn now. You can't negotiate with me. And um, your turn. Why can't I? No, I'm not going to take that. Why not? Because. You're only one monster ahead of me. It's okay. <laughs> and our green leaf, you wanted to put it in the green section. That's looking pretty safe still. Okay. Well, I'm going to slay 3,872 orcs single handedly with one blue knight. Thank you. <laughs> 
And I get a treasure card. Horde. For the Horde. Are we supposed to discard and draw at the beginning of our turn? Yeah. Oh, because I don't do it at the beginning. Alright, so I used the blue knight and took out 3,832 orcs. You picked up the Duck of Doom. You should know better. Give me one treasure card at random. That was good. You didn't take the chainsaw. <laughs> um, I don't have any red archers. How many trophies do you have? But as soon as I have one, two, three, four, so we're tied. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, but when Tut gets into the night ring. I can definitely show up for the show. So that is going to end my thing. Wait. Okay, they moved for me, right? That card's gone. Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, not for me, but they moved at the end of my turn. Shrieking Geek move up? Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. That must have been a stone ball or something. Why'd you hand me that? You have to place monsters. I know. I'm looking for the bag. There it is. <laughs> Here, you know, you roll. Oh, yeah, I have to roll. <laughs> I can't just randomly roll my mind. Oh, look, we're getting something in green. Yeah, it's making all the red monsters move. <laughs> one space. One, 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 one. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to keep that for a symbol then. But wait! Can I play this anytime or do I have to play it during my play cards phase? <clears throat> oh, I have to roll for this. Sixer! Ooh, I'm a weird little leprechaun! <laughs> <clears throat> and fiber! Roll a die. All monsters in the corresponding ring move one space. Roll a three oh, or four. Lord. Let's go red! Three! And nothing happens. Okay. Well, I am going to discard three cards and draw five, six, seven. And I'm gonna play. Oh no! I'm picking the wrong one. Draw two castle cards. That's good. Okay. So one red swordsman, one any color swordsman, and another red swordsman takes King Tut. So are we allowed to play as many cards as we are possibly <clears throat> illegally able to play? Yeah. Okay. Always. And then I'm going to play go. a blue knight with a, let's see, rat on a stick. Wait. Oh, you took my rat. You didn't take my rat. You did take my rat. Hold oh, on. I'm going to redo dirty this. Rat. I'm going to redo oh. my whole thing. I'm going to take my three cards here. But why? Because. And put King Cut back here. And then I'm going to play Dagger of Treachery. Damage a monster in the Swordsman Ring for three additional points. Must be played with a Swordsman or Hero. So I'm going to put that there. And play that. And that gives me him. I took the treasure. And then... I'm going to play. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia. Mamma mia. My blue knight with rat on a stick. So that damages him for two. 
freaking geek here. I'm going to play a blue archer. Huh, <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> and I'm also going to play a card here that says drive him back. It moves one monster back into the forest, keeping it in the same arc. So I'm going to play oh. him back. But I was going to keep it. And that will end my... Can you help me with anything? We'll negotiate. Uh, yes. Okay. I can take out the lame goblin or undead horse. Actually. How about you help me take it? Oh, you can only play one card. Oh, well then so, I, can, I can only give out the lame goblin. lame goblin and I can do one damage to Undead Horse. Well, how about you help me with lame goblin and I'll give you the singing and dancing sword, which will damage a monster in the swordsman ring with one additional point. Or how about I give you the red knight and you let me claim the goblin. Hmm? You let me claim the goblin. Now you get the treasure card. No. I'll give you this card. And I get everything. Well, then I'm I giving you this treasure card for it. Which could help you next round. Well, it looks like I'm not going to hit the guy in goblin. Um... So what did you want? You wanted him for one? Yeah, I wanted him. Okay, then you can have him. And I'll keep my thing and I'll get the treasure. Okay. Red Knight. I get Goblin. You get the treasure. Yeah, that's not on the board. Okay, and oh, I, I lost help on my, that turn. We couldn't do that. Oh, well, oh, then sorry. I guess she's... I cheated. Put him back. I have to get him back. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't have monsters. No, you didn't. Oh, they didn't move up either. <laughs> hey, this is... This is to add two more treasure cards. Are the treasure cards supposed to go somewhere before we put them in our hand? The treasure cards. Are they supposed to go somewhere before they go to our hand? Because that's the way it sounds like with these cards. No, I don't think so. Okay, I'll check in just a second. Yeah, What's the says, card text? This says play at any time to draw and add two more treasure cards. That's like adding them to what? A pool? No, I mean, the <coughs> hand, I would guess. Um, because you just take them, you just get them. I don't... Setting up anything owed from negotiated help and you and a person who helped you add any treasure earned to your hand. Treasure that may be played at any time may be played now, otherwise treasure cards cannot be played until the play cards phase. Oh, so they just go to our hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It was just weird because I was reading it and I'm like... Well, add two more treasure cards? What What does that mean? So that just means I can play it and then I can take two cards. Okay. Right? So I can play this and take two cards and add them to my hand. Gotcha. I've been discarding these into the wrong pile here. Oh. Discarding what? Um... <clears throat> it's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna Did get ready. Did you discard of, and draw? I'm getting ready to. Well, I'm not, I don't want to use this, so let's discard that one. That's gonna move a monster forward. Let's eliminate Green Swordsman. And we will draw two cards to replace. Nice. Alright guys, so we've shown you guys uh, everything as far as how to play with the new Munchkin side of the mechanics. 
Um, so we're going to leave it off right there. Well, I'll explain something real quick about these. If they hit the wall, the wall goes. And then if they make it here, they do this. And then they start going in a clockwise manner once they're actually inside the ring. And there's only certain cards that can help you stop them. Yep, so if you guys would like to see a full playthrough, we will actually be posting um, a full playthrough shortly uh, after this review is up. So we will conclude. Yeah. Alright guys, so our final thoughts on Munchkin Panic is that it's Munchkin and it's Castle Panic all slammed into one, except for not only are you playing cooperative, but you're also backstabbing each other with the Munchkin side of Castle Panic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really got some really cool artwork. And uh, if you guys have played Castle Panic, you guys already know that. And if you've played Munchkin, you know, it's really Munchkin themed. Uh, and the art's very character. Munchkin and also very Castle Panic. It's a wonderful blend of the two. So yeah, it's, it's like one of those, it's like two good games came together and made a better game with the two combinations. I know there's a ton of games out there with Munchkin theme. Um, I'm gonna put, this is probably one of the ones that I would put probably in the top five for a Munchkin theme. I wonder if we could play the Wizard's Tower with this. <laughs> well, you just It'd have be to like shuffle. mayhem. All you would have extreme. to do is shuffle the cards in. We could try it. Oh man. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah. Um. Tim actually said when we were playing, I don't think I ever want to play regular Castle Panic anymore. He wants to play this. So. Yes, because this this actually. You're playing cooperative, but I like games that are competitive as well. So this like gives you a little mixture of both. It's like you can build an alliance and help each other. But then as soon as that alliance is over and you defeat that monster, you know, you go back to fighting each other. So it kind of reminds me of... This is a really bad reference if you've never played World of Warcraft, but the Horde. They're always fighting each other, but then they also are against the alliance. So it's... it's you don't fight Horde. Yeah, the, well, the Horde always... They always have controversies and stuff. Between, With their leaders, Inside but... the Horde. So it's a really bad reference to, to bring that into it. Um, but, uh... It was a bad reference. Why did you say it? Because that was the best I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad reference, but it was the best example I could think of. Um, we but yeah, it's We are like, highly impressed with it. Um, it was... We were really excited to get it. When they told us that we could get a review copy, we were, like, super excited. So, thank you, yes. Justin. Because we tried, we tried getting on our side before, Jennifer? and it, it wasn't working out. So Jennifer, the one that... I don't remember. They have a new, a new person I haven't dealt with before, and they apparently saw that we were good enough. So we we we're appreciative because um, we tried getting on before and we didn't we didn't end up making the cut. So this is uh, this is really exciting that we got the review copy of Much Panic, and it said mild blemishes maybe on the box. I think there's like a tiny little like a dent in the corner. Doesn't but even matter. Dent in the corner, like it plays well. So hey. Yeah, it's a really cool game, so if you guys are looking or wondering what it's about, um, probably by this time you already know everything because we showed you how to play and everything. For kids, I would start with Castle Panic, and then once they have that, yeah. I would upgrade to Munchkin Panic, and they would have a blast with it. And if your kids know how to play Munchkin, then get them Munchkin Panic because it's a lot of fun and adds a little co-op twist to it. Yeah, and if you can, try to play Castle Panic. And then play Munchkin, and that way you'll know how the two separate, and then play this, and then they'll come together. And, uh, and then you'll know how to play kind of Munchkin mechanics with the Castle Panic mechanics. And uh, um, I really cost, liked, but stay cooperative. I like the, um, the change of the monsters, how some of them have more than three, and you have to get them to, you have to get two hit cards to get them, or three hit cards to get that final hit. Um, so I thought that was really cool, and the art and the different um, different things like the hippograph. It's a hippo instead of like a hippogriff, which is <laughs> like it's just funny. And I don't know if those are actually in the Munchkin game or not. Yeah, well, and the horse that's on the back too. It's like the undead, undead horse. horse. Yeah. And uh, the lame goblin and well, the lame, Pu the lame goblin is like what was it? Pukachu. 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 And I think, is it, they're actually vomiting, aren't they? Yeah, puke at you. Yeah. But it's Pukachu. Like yeah, Pikachu. so it's kind of like making fun of a, a and Pokemon. And there's Squidzilla. 
What did I go? It's really, it's, you know, really cool. Yeah. So we say... And, it comes, and it comes with a bag for your pieces. Yeah, that was helmets. really cool. Um, you can, the, you have to get the bag in Wizard's Tower to get it with regular panic, Castle Panic. Oh. But, but this one came, this with, one the came with a little munchkin bag, so that was really cool. Um, that was a big bonus plus for us. Uh, oh! Better than putting them upside down and trying to scramble them. But the components are top notches always from them, and they're fantastic with their customer service. We got dead panic, and it also it was missing a piece, and they were we had that piece within like four days in the mail, so yeah. they're really good. So I don't have anything else to say except for this game is awesome. Add it to your shelf. And uh, your library. Library. Because we know we all have more than one shelf. Um, so this is uh, Fireside Games, Much Companion. Fireside and, uh, and Steve Jackson Games. And Steve Jackson Games. Which, if you guys haven't seen, we have a Revolution uh, video out of their, I think it was like an 09 that game came out. But anyways, they give us a review copy for that. So you can check the game out. It's kind of a hidden bluffing game. So, anything else? No, you're Tim. Yes, yeah, so I'm Tim. And I'm Anna. And this is the Geek Dog Gary <laughs> Group, and this is Munchkin Panic by Fireside Games and Steve Woo! Jackson Games.